Okay, the Neo Geo MVSX Multi Video System Home Arcade. 50 games. I think this is probably the biggest item I've unboxed yet. So what is a Neo Geo MVS? So back in the 90s, SNK, well, they made all of these games. I think all of them. They also made arcade hardware. And the Neo Geo was basically their way of costing down the ownership for uh, an arcade in Japan. When it started to show up in hotels in Japan, people started to ask, hey, how can I get this at home? So the idea for the Neo Geo console came to be. This obviously is not what the console is, but the console basically took the same cartridges as the arcade machine. They are huge and very expensive. So even to this day, collecting for the Neo Geo is extremely expensive. Huh. I hope the screenshot on the front here isn't indicative of the scaling quality on the machine. That would be uh, kind of unfortunate. So we've got King of Fighters 94 through 99. Uh, and 2000, and 2001, and 2002, and 2003. Okay, there's more of those than I thought there would be. Metal Slug, one through X. Samurai Showdown, one and two, and three, and four. I thought there were only like three of those. No Neo Turf Masters. That's a little disappointing. And this product is not a Neo Geo MVS system. This product is not compatible with Neo Geo MVS cartridges. So, no assembly required. I'm gonna hold them to that. Some styrofoam. We've got a power adapter that's uh, 12 volts, three amps. That's not that heavy. <clears throat> yep, it is upside down. Well, one thing I can say right now is that this is a lot easier than unpacking a uh, an actual arcade machine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really don't see those instructions. It's a product unit. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. On the front here, we've got. <laughs> Oh man, these are super cute. They probably wouldn't even fit a dime, but uh, these are supposed to be like quarter coin slots. We've got two speakers on the front, or at least I'm assuming there are speakers behind those grills. We've got a dial. I guess that would be used for the golf game. Ooh, micro switched joystick, eight way. Very nice. These don't feel so good. They kind of stick a little bit if you push them off angle and uh, they don't have a click to them. They are the North American style, like, concave. So that some people would prefer to the Japanese style, like, domed, like these. So we've got left player start, options, select game, right player start, and a couple of little LEDs, two digits. Around back, we have what looks to be a power button, a USB port, and our DC in. That's pretty much it for the outside of it. Uh, hey, Jono, how much would they hate us if I took the back panel off? Uh... I guess there's only one thing left to do here, and that's to do the peel. Oh, this doesn't feel like a very good peel. Oh, it's not good. Oh, no. Oh, it's, it's terrible. It's like stuck enough that even if I get a little bit, oh, there we go. There we go. Well, let's plug it in. But first, a message from our sponsor, One Provider. One provider consolidates data center services across the world to answer your hosting needs for all budgets and project types. While their dedicated servers are available in 140 locations, their one cloud service makes it easy to deploy your personal blog, database, or storage instance in any of its 39 locations in just a few clicks. Tying everything together is one panel, a dashboard that allows management of all your servers, dedicated and virtual, in a single place. Click the link in the description below to deploy today. All right, let's power it up and see what happens. Mm, nothing terribly special about the power adapter, but 12 volts, three amps, you don't really need anything big. On the other hand, this cabinet is clearly big enough to have an internal power supply, so I don't know why they need a brick. Lights up up top, and we've got a little LED animation on that. Reasonable resolution screen. It doesn't need to be super high resolution. Oh, there's no jingle. I wonder what emulator it's running. Probably like MAME or Final Burn Alpha. Uh, ooh, that's, <clears throat> that could be smoother. The good news is it's actually responsive. So that's not the, like, it's not that it's lagging. It's just that there's no animation frames. I guess they had to pre-bake this. Let's see what's in the settings. <clears throat> Language, English, uh, I'm guessing Japanese, Korean. Game mode, MVS versus AES. So MVS is the arcade experience where you would have, I guess, um, credits in the form of coins. Uh, whereas 
AES is the home uh, home video system. No credits in that traditional sense. Game image. Oh, cool. We have uh, scaling options. So we have pixel scaling, pixel scan line, which I guess is just the scan line filter. Smooth scaling, which I would not recommend unless you really hate chunky pixels. H scanning line, V scanning line, 40 degree scanning line. I have no idea what they're talking about here. Maybe it's like horizontal scan lines versus vertical versus diagonal. Uh, system update, I mean 1.0, it's a it's an engineering sample, so we're not gonna see anything other than that. Uh, is that where the manual is? Oh, snkmvsx.com. I guess that's where the manual is. Now we've got this on the table here, but it actually does come with an optional, well, okay, it doesn't come with it, but you can buy it with an optional stand to use it in an upright actual arcade orientation. Uh, let's just throw up King of Fighters 94, I guess. I don't see, oh, is this the volume control? Sure is. So where is the coin button then? Well, there's player start, there's select game. Okay, select game is the coin button. Just dump our pockets. I don't remember anything about this game. I'm also not very good with joysticks. Yeah, I am super used to D-pads. I can't pull off a dragon punch for my like to save my life right now. And that's that. Okay, so let's go to the options. Game image. I want to see what this is all about. So pixel scan line. Okay. So that gives us like a arcade scan line effect. Personally, I think I would prefer to have a uh, little bit less black for the scan line. I feel like the input is probably decent as far as delay goes. I didn't really notice much of a delay. I just suck at King of Fighters. Uh, uh, smooth image doesn't look very good. I'm not sure if this is trying to like pull off a scan, like a 2X Psy or a Super Eagle type of thing, HQX, but it's not really doing it. But yeah, this is basically, it looks blurry as all, all heck. It's, it's basically bilinear filtering. Uh, okay, so what about that horizontal scan line thing? Oh, this is more of the effect I was looking for. So this is kind of like a more subtle scan line effect, although I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's uneven. So like if you look at the sky, and especially when the sky moves, the scan lines get like thicker and thinner, depending on, you know, where it is on the screen, which is a problem. Basically, that means that this game is being scaled in a non-integer fashion. So uh, it's not a, like a direct, one-to-one -one of what the original game would be. Also, I'm noticing that this scan line mode also has filtering on. So unless that's like actually like a firmware bug, then uh, this is not the scanning mode for, scaling mode for me. Uh, okay, let's try the vertical, see what that looks like. Uh, actually, that looks a little bit more like an arcade game, but it's still doing the scaling thing. Like it's trying to smooth everything out for Really no reason. There's no reason to do that with scan lines on. Unless you're trying to like mimic like CRT blur, but uh, it doesn't look like CRT blur. And let's see the 40 degree. Yeah, so it's like diagonal. That actually doesn't look too bad though. But yeah, you can you can see that the, the scaling is not quite nice. It's, it's not great. So I would recommend having the uh, Scaling mode set as either pixel scaling or pixel scan line. I wouldn't use any of the other modes personally, unless they fix these to not be smoothed. If they can fix those to not be smoothed, those would be my pref like my preference. But uh, for now, let's just go with pixel scaling. Yeah, that looks way more crisp. Let's do Metal Slug. I'm a little bit better at Metal Slug. Uh, let's just play the original. A lot of slowdown in this game. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure this is how it looked on the original hardware though. Yeah. Metal Slug really kind of pushed it. Yeah, it looks really good in pixel mode. So there's actually letterboxing around pixel mode. So you can see that the full screen is being taken up here. But if I go back, then we have letterboxing. That's because it's scaling to an exact multiple of the original, uh, the original screen size. As far as uh, input lag goes, it's actually really good. So like, Yeah, that's probably close on what it originally was. Okay, so the emulation's pretty good. I'm not sure if it's perfect, but it's pretty good. And oh, hey, there's a violence setting on here. So I guess you can turn on blood. Uh, I think the original Japanese release had blood, whereas the uh, international releases used sweat, which is what I'm looking at here. 
It's not super intuitive to navigate everything here, but I'm sure you'd, you'd get used to it. Just like I would get used to having the, uh, the buttons like this instead of having them in a line, like the original Neo Geo did. Let's take it apart. You got a screwdriver? All right, let's see what we've got here. This is a USB connection to that display. Uh, up here is where the lighting for the upper panel is. Down here, we've got the buttons, which I'd probably recommend replacing with your own. Definitely a lot of room that they could have put a power supply in. There are in fact two speakers, one down in this corner and one down in that one. The joysticks themselves, yeah, that's nice. Now, I don't think these are Sanwa sticks or anything. The buttons certainly don't feel like anything special, but they are micro switches. So, very nice there. I wanna see what's under this panel here. There it is. On closer inspection, this is actually a fairly common CPU in these arcade machines. Action Semi ATM 7051H. That's a quad core. So yeah, it's nothing particularly special, but it doesn't really have to be. And this is just breaking out for the general purpose IO down here for all the uh, buttons and whatnot. Yeah, this is the connector for the display, obviously. So power over here and data over here. This looks like a USB connector here. And so does that. So I guess optionally, this board would support two USB ports down here, but they don't need it. So they only have the one. And this USB connection actually just goes right up to this USB port back here. It's just a, actually an A to A cable. Overall, fairly modular inside. It's kind of neat. Overall, it's a tidy little package that at $449, the question you really have to ask yourself is, do you expect more? You're getting a lot of games, yes. So. From that perspective, if you're a collector of Neo Geo hardware from the past, you're getting a lot of value here. But at the same time, you could build a MAME machine to run your own games, if you legally own them, and get a much higher quality experience out of it than this. The thing is, you'd have to build it yourself. Speaking of which, I would recommend if you buy one of these, swap out these buttons for something better, because these, they're not good. If you hit them the wrong way, they're not gonna go down very well. If it were priced a little bit lower, or if it had higher quality buttons, I would say that it would be perfectly great for anyone who just wants to, you know, relive these older games and play them in a way that, I don't know, sparks nostalgia. It's just, there are, I feel, better ways to do that, and this just leaves some things to be desired. Unlike Short Circuit, subscribe, watch more. Thank you.